Hey guys, welcome to my first YouTube video. So today I'm going to be showing you a review and first impression on a foundation which I don't think I've ever seen before. Um, and it's hard to find a review on this foundation on YouTube because I know when I went to go buy it, I wanted to see what other people thought of it and I came across two YouTube reviews. So I figured I would pick it up and try it and let you guys know how it is. And I'll do a wear test throughout the day to see if it lasts all day like it claims it does. So the first thought I had when I saw this foundation is that the packaging looks a lot like the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation. So it comes in a glass bottle and it has a pump which is nice. The foundation retails for $17.95 Canadian and some of the claims are that it has auto adapting pigments, has a natural finish on the skin, 10 hour staying power, it's waterproof, suitable for all skin types, hydrating, and it's 100% hypoallergenic, gluten-free, paraben-free, oil-free, and non-comedogenic. So basically it sounds like it's the perfect foundation for everyone. It comes in six shades, which is a little bit lacking. Actually quite a bit lacking, six shades is like nothing, especially since most of the shades are very light to medium skin tones. They have this tool that you can use on their website to match your skin tone to their foundation using other brands that you use. So Makeup Forever was one of the brands that they have on there and you can just put in what color you are in Makeup Forever and it will match you to their foundation. So that's what I did and I came up with the color Ivory which is the second lightest shade. And I probably could have gotten away with the lightest shade but this one was a little bit more like neutral undertone whereas the lightest shade was a little bit more yellow undertone. But I also wanted to see what they compared their darkest shade to in the Makeup Forever foundation. So it says that their darkest shade is equal to 127 or Y335 Dark Sad. Which I know is a very medium color, so this foundation is obviously not going to work for everyone. Especially if you have darker skin tones than Dark Sand in Makeup Forever foundation. So Marcel ships to Canada and the US from their website, but I know you can purchase Marcel in pretty much every Shoppers Drug Mart and Walmart in Canada. So I also picked up the Marcel Flawless Skin Fusion Concealer. And this guy comes in really nice plastic packaging. It looks to me like it's high end. And it... It reminds me a little bit of the Studio Skin Concealer, which I have also never tried. But if this video gets enough views and you guys want to see me do a comparison between the two foundations and concealers, I could do that for you. I'm going to do a wear test today because it claims it stays on for 10 hours. So I'm going to do half my face with a brush and I'll do the other half with a beauty blender. And we'll see how the coverage is on both sides, whether it looks natural on the skin like it claims it does. And then I will just do some check-ins throughout the day to let you know how it's wearing on the skin and I will do one final one before I take it off to let you know if it really did stay on for 10 hours. So I just put my hair back and I zoomed you guys in a little bit so that you can see how the foundation applies to my skin. I'm not going to wear a primer or anything just because I want to see how well the foundation works by itself and if it really does stay for 10 hours. But I have moisturized and I've used the Eucerin Dry Skin Replenishing Face Cream. Looks like that. And I'll give you a little bit of background about my skin. I have pretty normal skin. Um, I tend to get oily, like not very oily at all, but if I do get oily, I get oily around my nose, but that's also the place that I have my dry patches. So we'll see if this foundation sticks to those dry patches or if any oils come through during the day. But yeah, generally I have pretty normal skin. I'm just gonna take one pump of this on the back of my hand. And we'll see how far one pump goes. That's what it looks like. It's running down my hand a, quite a bit, so it's pretty liquidy. So I'm just going to apply it with my finger, and I'm going to do the first side with the brush. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. So for that layer on my face, I've used about half of the pump of foundation. Um, with the brush, I'm getting a pretty good medium coverage. I don't know if you guys can see. I know my lighting's not that great. But yeah, if you can see the difference between this side of my face. I, got, I have some redness right here. And then this side of my face. 
It was a little bit harder to blend right here where I have a little bit of peach fuzz. I found it was sticking a little bit in there. But it's not like settling into any of my pores on the brush side. It actually looks pretty good. It feels pretty lightweight. Okay, so I went to go wet my beauty sponge and my cat came racing in here and he's he's gonna like knock over all my stuff. Look at, say hi to the camera. Say hi. Okay, time to go. I'm pretty sure I just got foundation all over my cat because now the foundation is smeared on my hand. So I'm gonna have to get a new pump and I'll do the other side of my face with my Real Techniques blending sponge. There's cat hair in my foundation. So the sponge side is definitely blending a little bit easier. I don't have to work in it as much, but I am going to have to use more product because that only covered the lower half of my face. So take another little bit of a pump, put that on my forehead. <laughs> coverage I'm getting on the beauty blender side is a little bit less but I like the finish better it's not sticking so much to the peach fuzz on my face whereas this side it is a little bit more um, but I'm gonna see if I can try to cover up like this redness that's in here and I have a little bit of redness down here that I'm gonna see if I can cover up <laughs> So it covered up a little bit more of the redness, but normally I would go in with like a concealer and conceal a little bit more. So far it looks nice. It looks pretty skin-like. So now we're going to go in with the concealer. And I'm just going to put this under my eyes because um, I really want to see how the foundation wears by itself without concealer on top, especially for covering blemishes. So I'm just going to put this a little bit under my eyes. I'm not going to go too far down because I really don't want that coverage. on that side in with the beauty blender. First thought, the concealer, I have the shade Fair and the concealer is very yellow. It says it's supposed to be a lightweight concealer but it is really thick. I don't know if you guys, if you can see, it's pretty thick on the wand. It does a pretty good job at covering. Put the same amount on this side. And I'm going to blend this side out with a brush. I'm definitely getting better coverage on my dark circles with the brush. Okay, so that's what it looks like up close. So far, so good. I'm going to go put the rest of my makeup on and see how everything looks on top of it. I'm not going to set my face with a powder because already I can tell it's setting pretty well. And I really want to see how it stays by itself without a powder. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back with the finished makeup. And my first impression after putting everything else on my face is that the foundation looks really good. I was able to blend my bronzer and my blush really well. Like I didn't set the foundation with powder or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's set down to a nice finish. First impression is that the brush side is looking a lot better than the beauty blender side. Beauty Blender said I didn't get as much coverage and you can see, like, I'll zoom you guys in. I have a pimple right here that's definitely showing through. I have some redness around my nose that's peeking through. I did try to put two layers of the foundation on, but it's still, like, not a full coverage. But yeah, other than that, everything blended out really nicely. This side, I think, looks really good. This side does look flawless. The only thing I would say is that... The foundation is sticking to a little bit of my peach fuzz, but I think if you used a setting spray, you could totally get rid of that. So it finished to a pretty like natural looking finish, maybe a little bit more on the matte side. It does look really good. It's not settling into any of my pores so far. It's not setting into any lines like around my uh, mouth. So my first impression is that I do really like it. I'm gonna wear it throughout the day and then I will be back in a few hours to show you what it looks like. Check-in time now is 11.46, but I've had the foundation on since about 11 o'clock, so 
yeah, we'll say 11 o'clock. So I'll see you in a few hours. Hey guys, so I'm back to do a check-in on the foundation. It is now three o'clock, so that means the foundation has been on for four hours, and it's still going pretty well. I mean, I'm starting to get a little bit oily kind of around my nose area, but it's nothing crazy, like nothing that I would set with a powder yet. Um, it's not settling into lines around my mouth yet. So far, it just looks good. I think right now, I'm thinking that if I was going to wear this regularly, I would probably set it with a powder just because, I don't know, like I, maybe it's because I've been sitting in front of my computer screen all day, but my face is starting to feel like a little bit warm, maybe a little bit more tacky than I'd like it to. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. And I will just zoom you in so you can see what it looks like. And I know my lighting is different now. I just wanted to show you in different lighting what it looks like. So you can see just getting a little bit oily right here, but nothing crazy. My redness is still showing through. Maybe a little bit worse than it was before. So far, so good. I'm going to keep wearing it. I have just been like doing stuff around the house today, but so far, I like it. All right, final check in, you guys. So the time is 8.35. It's just before the 10 hour mark, but I wanted to share you guys my final thoughts on what it looks like right before it gets to 10 hours. Um, you guys, I really like this. I think for a drugstore foundation, it is really good. It looks really great on my skin. My skin doesn't look super oily or anything like that, like I've got a little bit of shine coming through right here, a little bit on my nose and my chin, but normally I would set my foundation with a powder anyways, so I think if I just ran over my face with a little bit of powder, it would look really great. The foundation hasn't separated anywhere in places that it would normally separate. Obviously I still have some of that redness peeking through um, around my pimple, on my nose a little bit, and yeah, I mean, just kind of normal spots that I get redness. But on the brush side, the coverage has stayed pretty much all day. My blush and bronzer still look really good. Um, on the other side, the finish is definitely more natural looking. So if you're looking for something that's going to look very natural on the skin, but not quite have as much coverage, I would definitely apply it with a beauty blender or any type of beauty sponge. But if you're looking for a little bit more coverage, which I tend to like, um, I would definitely apply it like I did on this side, just with a flat top kabuki brush. I will zoom you guys in to see what it looks like. And I know you're not going to be able to see much because the lighting is pretty bad, but... And then I just wanted to show you guys before I head out, I'm going to set it with a powder and we'll see how it looks now that it's the end of the day. And I'm just using the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder in the shade Translucent. And I'm just going to dust this on my face, see if I can get rid of some of that shine. So after powdering, it looks really, really good. So I'm going to link everything down below in the description box. Um, I'll put Marcel's website and I will put a little bit about the foundation. And yeah, I mean, I think I might wear it for a few more days and see how I like it. Maybe trying it out with a primer, with some powder, with maybe a finishing spray and seeing how it works then. And then maybe by the time this video is uploaded, I can add something in the description box about how it's still wearing. But I think if you're looking for something from the drugstore that looks very nice on the skin but has that coverage that you want, I think you should definitely give this a go. Guys, so one thing I forgot to mention, um, I forgot that I was also testing out the concealer. So I put the concealer under my eyes today and it actually looks so good. Normally by the end of the day, my concealer always creases. It doesn't matter how much powder I set it with, it's always creasy and I can see like little lines where there's like concealer sticking in the lines and it's not very nice, but this one... I'll try to show you guys, like, there is no creasing going on there. And it doesn't feel drying under my eyes, it really is lightweight, even though it was a pretty thick concealer, and it covered everything I wanted it to cover, so two thumbs up on the concealer. So if you enjoyed my video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and I guess I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys.